The ruins of Monk Breton Priory in Barnsley is one of Yorkshire's best kept secrets and it's in the village of Lundwood. Now, after leaving the woods with the stone faces in from my last video, I saw on the internet I'd be passing here on my way home. So I thought I've got to call in. I was glad I did. It was originally a Cluniac monastery. It was first founded on the site in the 12th century. And it went on to become a Benedictine monastery in 1281. I think building started in the late 1150s, but it wasn't complete until the 14th century. And then in 1538, Henry VIII kicked off with his uh, dissolution of the monasteries, and the prior was destroyed, materials were repurposed. And then in the 1580s, the estate was bought by William Talbot, who was the Earl of Shrewsbury and the west range of the cloisters was converted into a country house for his son Henry. Which explains why this part of the priory is slightly more intact than like the priory church for instance. The site is maintained by English heritage. However, unlike many of their larger sites, there is no entry fee and there is a free car park in the grounds. The first part of the priory remains that you come to is the gatehouse. Right, this is, this is entry gate. point is pretty well preserved and a gatekeeper would have used this building to admit or deny entry to the priory. But only the outline of the priory church remains there. Then we come to the prize range. A lot of the walls of this building are still standing. This section used to stand three stories high apparently. Wow. The ground level is used as a storeroom and the upper levels were chambers where the monks slept. Right here we're close to the kitchen and there's a series of stone lined drains. And the drains at the Priory are some of the best surviving examples of monistic drainage in Europe. If you follow the drains they'll lead you to the drainage tunnels which disappear underground which I'll show you later. The kitchen was supplied by a water channel which washed away kitchen waste to the deep drains under the monk's latrine and there's some kind of sluice that they used to open up and let the water through and flushed it through. The cloisters here are an enclosed square at the centre of the priory and this central court was lined by four covered walks which acted as corridors connecting various parts of the priory.
This is the remains of the Priory kitchen. That was sophisticated uh, drainage. Wish I bought a torch, see how far that goes. And these drainage tunnels I mentioned led all the way down to what would have been a brook at the rear of the property, which would have then dumped it into the River Dern. Ah, that's where that tunnel comes. You can't get out this side. Shitty, you can literally see the path of the stone drains as it meanders down from the priory to the brook. Uh, this is the top of the drainage. That's where I've just come, this is where it comes out. These tunnels are very well preserved and apparently they've hosted paranormal investigations. It's strongly rumoured that some of the monks never actually left Monk Breton Priory. Visitors have reported seeing robed figures walking around the site. And there's been a lot of paranormal investigations here and some good results apparently. Allegedly, there are supposed to have been tunnels leading all over the local area from Monk Breton, including to Doncaster and Sheffield Cathedral. And a link to Wakefield Church in the city centre is the most common story. Now, a lot of people think it's highly unlikely, as Monk Breton was Catholic and the Wakefield Church was Anglican. I think it's far more likely that the tunnels led to like a safe distance from the Priory, perhaps to a nearby farm building owned by the monks, and could have been used as a bolt hole or escape route should the Priory come under attack during the dissolution of the monasteries. Well, sometimes tunnels and hidden vaults under churches and monasteries were places where remnants of early pagan worship were kept by the church, hidden from the local populace to prevent pagan worship, yet not destroyed for fear of incurring the wrath of pagan gods and spirits, which apparently they didn't believe in. Now this is the administrative building and it's probably the best preserved building on the site. Well, definitely is. It stands alone to the left of the gatehouse, as if you stood on the car park. It was built in the 13th century. It's where the monks would meet visitors. Now, since I've been researching, close by, I've discovered the mill of the Black Monk. It's a former water mill originally associated with Monk Breton Priory. And it was built in 1145 AD to service the neighbouring monks at Breton Priory. And a wealthy Saxon landowner, Elric, donated the land to the Cluniac monks. However, there is a lot of evidence of Saxon and pre Norman conquest activity. It leads many to believe that there was an original mill predating the Priory by some 500 years. But this building appears to date from the 17th century when it was probably rebuilt with stone reused from the Priory. And it was built adjacent to the River Dern, which was 
prone to flooding and depositing silt into the surrounding land, and over 500 years the land level rose by 6 feet, burying nearly half the building. And when a local architect bought the mill in the late 1980s, I think it was, he undermined and pinned the building to the original foundations and set a series of hydraulic jacks to lift the building bodily to the present day land level, following a sympathetic restoration. But it is Barnes's most haunted house, the Mill of the Black Monk, and to attract many ghost hunters. I'll leave a link if anybody's interested, one on Facebook. <laughs>